First Commonwealth Bank. And it is time now for one of our interview segments at 946 this morning. And our interview segments presented by Marcus and Mack voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. So as you may have heard in our coverage of Indiana County Commissioner's meetings over the last couple of months, the Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance, also known as the SALDO, has been a major part, and it has been recently approved by the county commissioners. So a lot of people are probably saying, okay, what's that? Well, we've got the people to answer those questions. Joining us now from the Office of Planning and Development, we have Josh Krug, and also part of the committee that helped create this uh, SALDO, uh, we have Josie Cunningham. So, folks, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us on, Josh. I'm Appreciate glad, it. Glad that both of you are here. So, let's answer the big question, yes. Josh. What is a saldo? <laughs> okay. Well, you did. It, it's in the name. If you if you spell it out, subdivision and land development ordinance. A lot of people don't know what subdivision necessarily is, even if you've never gone through the process. And that's basically taking land and dividing it into more than one piece. Um, okay. Side lot addition from your neighbor, putting in a new neighborhood, um, trying to expand your lot, um, uh, a lot line revision for any type of reason. Those are all examples of subdivision. And, and we've had an ordinance in place since the 60s in, in this county uh, with respect to subdivision. That ordinance was last amended in 1990, previous mm-hmm. to this new ordinance being adopted. The new ordinance that was adopted in April and goes active on August the 10th, is a subdivision and land development ordinance. So inclusive of subdivision, we tried to not change very much from the previous ordinance with respect to subdivisions. The new ticket, the big ticket item, is land development. That is anything essentially besides a single-family residential construction mm-hmm. or an accessory to it, so a shed um, a small barn, a smaller barn or yeah. a bigger farm, those are not going to be land developments, but commercial land development is new. That's what I was going to say. This is going to, this land development is going to focus on commercial properties, it sounds like. Yes. So, Josie, this is, the, as Josh said in the history of this, this, the subdivision ordinance was last updated in the 90s. So it really was time for this to come into the 21st century. Oh, my goodness, century. yes. And we have worked as a committee and worked with Josh and the Planning Commission for almost seven years to bring this to fruition. Wow. So, And it has been very thorough. It has been well thought out. We're very proud of the end product. And it is for the future of Indiana County, and we find that to be Utmost in our in our planning. I have to I have to ask Josie, what was the toughest part about being about working on this project? The toughest part was being able to understand the division part, and mm-hmm. and also, Josh, I want to bring up. I mean, um, I want to bring up the part that we traveled throughout the county to all the municipalities within the county to discuss with them what we wanted to do, what their input would be, and how we would. And incorporate that in this uh, development project. That was 2018. Yes. Yeah, and that was because of the fact that this does affect all but just a couple of areas of Indiana County. The, those, uh, the rest of the county is covered under this ordinance. Correct. Yes. Yeah, it, it's a paradigm shift in a lot of ways for, for 32 out of 38 municipalities in the county, especially when it comes to land development and reviewing it. So currently the landscape is such that Indiana Borough – White Township, Burrell Township, East Wheatfield Township, Homer City Borough, and Blairsville are the only six municipalities out of 38 in the county that have their own ordinance adopted. The other 32, by what, because of the nature of the municipality's planning code, fall under the jurisdiction of the county. So okay. until the commissioners adopted this ordinance in all of those places, whether it be Rain Township, uh, the community of Salzburg, up in Smicksburg, Banks Township, Marion Center, uh, any of these center township for, for, for that matter, all these places, land developments were not being required to, com- to up- abide by any type of design standards when it comes to their potential impacts on the neighborhood and their neighbors. And that really does play a factor, I think, in the environmental causes, I think, Josie, because you people think about this you're seeing all these wonderful green fields and then all of a sudden, oh, there's a convenience store right there. Yes, uh, we want to make sure that the farmland is kept intact. We Mm want to make sure that what development does take place is done with a thought to the future, not just immediately. 
So what are some of the things that, I mean, obviously the big change is the fact that land development is included in this. Are there, have there been any changes to the subdivision side? Very little changes to the subdivision aspect, and we did that intentionally. Okay. Folks uh, are used to our process for subdivision, and we had a pretty good process in place for subdivision. As a planning commission and as staff, we've been able to handle subdivisions for years. We don't expect that process to change much. I will mention a couple minor changes. One is that all subdivisions and land developments will need to be reviewed and approved at a planning commission meeting. Okay. It's a big difference. Even though it's really not going to be a major stressor for people, the difference is that previously for a minor subdivision, a very small type of deal, we were able to approve it as staff and then get it ratified at a planning commission meeting. Yeah. Now they'll have to wait until the next meeting, which could be up to close to a month until the next meeting at the very most. But we're going to get them through quick. But it does make it all official, signed, sealed, delivered, just as if, say, a, somebody that was working on a subdivision in White Township would have to go to their planning commission. 100% exactly. accurate. It's a best practice. And, and mm -hmm. going back to the fact that we hadn't amended our process or our ordinance since 1990, it, it really did need to come up to snuff with what other people are doing in other places because it is the best practice to go through the process, ensure that there's responsible subdivision and, in particular, responsible land development taking place. And that's what we want, responsible land development for the future growth. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's what you probably heard whenever you did your tour of Indiana County talking to uh, the public. Yes, exactly what we heard, um, to protect their land but to understand that they could develop it within reason. Mm -hmm, definitely. So go ahead, Josh. Well, I just want to mention that most of the items that we call design standards, which are things like lighting, parking, mm -hmm. uh, potentially landscaping if they're in a residential neighborhood, these are items that will be required for different types of commercial land development. It is not zoning. You will still be able to do anything anywhere, essentially, that is not zoned. Uh, you will have to abide. Right. It's more of an if and then. So these design standards are things that most people are already implementing anyway. Yeah. This will just ensure it. Dollar General is a great example. This ordinance is in some ways a response to the prevalence of or the um, abundance of those types of things coming on board and how quickly they go up, right? Right. This will ensure responsible land development. Okay. So in, so in lieu of that, and the fact that there is a lot of new development in this ordinance, you're having some informational meetings uh, with the public once again, this time to inform them about what this contains. Yes. Actually, we've titled these, rather than just an outreach meeting or an informational or a public input meeting, as the other um, uh, times we've been out to the public were, these are workshops. These are outreach workshops. So we will have the ordinance that has been adopted. We did, of course, build in 120 days of dormancy. It was adopted in April. Right. We got the word out, and, and it'll be August 10th when it goes active. We understand that early communication is essential. So we have our first meeting tomorrow evening, 5.30 p.m. at the Coral Grayston Volunteer Fire Hall. Of course, one of those areas affected by this. Yes, exactly. these are regional meetings, and we had the meetings in locales that we have them scheduled in locales that are impacted by this ordinance directly. Mm -hmm. The second meeting is Monday, July 3rd. All of them are at 5.30 p.m. The second meeting is up at the Marion Center Park Hall, right. just off of the road there in Marion Center. Um, that's m Monday, July 3rd. And then July 11th, we're down in Salzburg. So, so tomorrow we cover is the, first the entire one. county and I think, meetings. And I think also it's important to note that if people can't attend any of those, yeah. there's a second chance with a virtual meeting. Two, even. Actually, same day, July 10th, 1.30 p.m. for those that are able to attend for work purposes or during the afternoon or maybe work in the evening, and farmers for that matter, and uh, also at 6 p.m. Uh, again. So two opportunities on July 10th for virtual meetings. All that information is available on our website, and I think has been uh, information been provided through press release. Right, we do have that in a story on our website Thank as you. well. So Thank we you. have the Zoom link there. Uh, Josie, you've been smiling uh, to pardon to pardon my borrowing of Mike Lang expression. You've been smiling like a butcher's dog about this whole thing because this is a really great accomplishment over seven years. But talk about getting it completed, and now seeing it in print. It is such a relief, and I I want to compliment the Indiana County planning staff. They worked tirelessly on this. 
And I also want to give a shout out to the members of the committee who worked with me. It took a lot of painstaking hours to bring this to fruition. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased. And I think it really is something that the county will benefit from. You probably also learned a lot about subdivisions and land development that you wouldn't have normally learned about. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So let's go over those meeting dates and locations once again. The first one is tomorrow, you said. Tomorrow at 530. At 530 at the Coral Grayston Fire Hall. That's in Coral. Uh -huh. Yep, exactly. Then the next meeting is Monday, July 3rd up in Marion Center at the Marion Center Park Hall at the East Mahoning Township Community Park. And uh, the next meeting, the, the third meeting is July 11th. At uh, the, if we're in person at Salzburg Borough office in Salzburg downtown and again, area. And again, the virtual meetings will be at one and six July 10th on July 10th. And Absolutely. we have the zoom link on our website. Thank and of you course, so much. and of course, if they want more information, they can call the office. Oh yes. You can always call our office, ask for myself or email myself or also Molly Sarver. I do want to additionally shout out Delbert Highlands. Of course, our boss, Byron Stauffer, executive director for making this all happen. The three member subcommittee of the planning commission and it's a nine member planning commission making this happen. Wow. So a lot of great work. Now you get yes. to show it off. We did have a consultant. I need to mention that we had a consultant early on. It was a $50,000 contract that the commissioners had, had been uh, in with the consultant, but that was only through 2019. Ever since then, we've been handling it as staff and committee to take it the full way through the finish line. Wow, that's great. So, great job, and now you get a chance to show it off. Thank you, Josh. Josie, Josh, thank you very much for joining us on Indiana in the Morning, and I hope these meetings are packed and full of people with some good questions. Thanks, Josh. Thank Appreciate you, Josh. the coverage. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Krug, Josie Cunningham, talking about the new Saldo Outreach Workshops that will start tomorrow here in Indiana County, and our interview at this time presented by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people.